Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the discussion on STVS Ravens. In this presentation, we'll be looking into a very unique system of uh, system that is uh, found in STVS Ravens, and it is the water vascular system. It helps mainly in locomotion, even though water vascular system is involved in many other functions. The most important function is helping in locomotion. Okay. Uh, here you can see it is a system of uh, canals uh, through which the seawater and amoeboid corpuscles move about. This water, the seawater enters into these uh, systems of canals and then it moves, it flows through these canals and uh, along with these uh, uh, in the water, you can also find amoebocytes moving about. Okay, so what is this actually system of canals made of? The structure you can see over here here this is what has happened is uh, the aboral um, like body wall is removed to expose the um, water vascular system and you can see over here this is the part okay this particular part i hope you can see here this one over here it is the stone canal which connects the aboral surface to the oral surface okay the uh, uh, aboral surface, the water vascular system, it uh, it starts with the structure which is known as the madreporite. And you already know that madreporite, it is a sieve-like structure which is placed on the central disc of the aboral surface. Okay, aboral surface of the central disc. I'm sorry. Now, the rest of the portion of the water vascular system, it is closely um, uh, like uh, placed on the oral surface, right, or close to the oral um, body wall. So, the part of the water vascular system uh, that connects the main part of the water vascular system with the madreporite, it is the stone canal. So stone canal, it extends oral, along the oral aboral axis between the oral surface that is madreporite and the aboral surface that is the chain of rings over here, the canals over here. Okay, so we can start with the structure of madreporite. The first part, it is the madreporite. Now, madreporite, you can see here, we have already seen this uh, picture. This is a madreporite and this is a figure which shows the madreporite. Madreporite is a thick, uh, like a rounded, sieve-like calcareous plate. And it is uh, already mentioned, it is situated on the aboral surface of the central disc, uh, usually placed uh, along the inter radius, that is between two, uh, what you call, arms. Okay, I hope you remember, it was like, uh, if this is the starfish we have, okay, the madreporite is uh, uh, placed in the interradial position. And these two arms, which actually have the madreporite in its uh, interradius, they are known as bivium. Okay, I hope you remember it is known as a bivium. B I V I. Okay, it is known as a bivium, and the rest of the three, it is known as a Trivium. Okay, so this is uh, the uh, madreporite. Okay, the madreporite it is a, a sieve-like structure, right? And uh, we can see it is uh, its surface. It bears. You can it, it can see it is marked ridges and grooves. The surface bears numerous, very fine radiating uh, ridges, furrows permeated by. Pores. You can see this is the surface of the madreporite, and if it is taken microscopically, you can see many pores on there. Okay, so the surface of the madreporite it bears numerous fine radiating uh, what you call grooves or furrows, which are being permeated, which are being porous, made porous with a uh, with almost like 250 or so minute pores on the surface, and each of these pores uh, it leads into the pore canals. You can see here this the pore canals. The pores it leads into pore canals, and these pore canals they unite to form the collecting canal. Okay, the collecting canals. Uh, this collecting canal it uh, is placed just within the surface of the madreporite. Okay, and these collecting uh, canals they lead into uh, a sac-like structure which is known as a ampulla. And it lies just below the madreporite. Okay, so this part is actually the madreporite, and the ampulla lies just below the madreporite. Okay, the ampulla it leads into the next part. It is known as a stone canal. Okay, the next part of the uh, water vascular system it is a stone canal, and the ampulla it leads into the stone canal. Okay, 
Now, when you speak about the stone canal, actually, it as already mentioned, it connects the oral uh, the uh, oral part uh, of the uh, water vascular system with the aboral part. That is, on the aboral side, you have the mad reaper, right? And on the oral side, you have this uh, system of these channels, okay, the canals or channels, okay. So, this stone canal, it connects the mad reaper right, with the rest of the water vascular system, okay. So, it is an S-shaped tube which opens on the oral side onto a ring canal uh, uh, which uh, lies around the mouth and hence it is the name ring canal uh, and on the aboral side it is connected with the mad reaper, right? Okay, and the uh, stone canal, the wall of the stone canal, it is supported by a series of calcareous ring, and that is why it is referred as a stone canal. Okay, the inner walls of the uh, the stone canal, it is uh, provided with tall uh, cells that bear cilia uh, on its surface, and the beating of these cilia, it actually draws water into the canal through the madreporite. Okay. Now, the stone canal, you can see over here in the structure, this is a stone canal. The stone canal, it is associated with axial organ, uh, which is placed within axial sinus. Axial sinus is a coelomic sac. Okay, so axial sinus is a coelomic sac, which encloses the uh, axial organ and the stone canal. And the whole structure together, axial sinus plus the stone canal plus the axial organ, it is known as an axial complex. Okay, it is this axial complex which extends between the madreporite and the ring canal. So, the next part we have is the ring canal. You can see over here, this is a stone canal and this is a ring canal. Ring canal, it is as already mentioned, it is placed uh, around the uh, oral region, right? So, it is almost like a pentagonal canal, it form, forming a ring around the esophagus specifically. The angles of the pentagon, you can see here, it is radial in position. That is, this is the arm. Okay, here you can see the arm. So, the uh, it uh, actually uh, faces the each of the radius. Okay, now, uh, what are the structures which are associated with the ring canal? One is tight man's bodies and the other is uh, uh, polyan vesicle. Okay, polyan vesicles as such, it is absent in the asterias. Uh, but we can see what are these structures. Okay, so you can see over here in the, the uh, ring canal, you have the tight man's body, isn't it? The ring canal in each of the radius, you can see it gives off a branch uh, uh, extending into the arm. Okay. And these, uh, what you call, um, what you call the canal, it is uh, known as the radial canal. I hope you can see over here. Yeah, radial canal. Okay. So, uh, along each radius or along each arm, the ring canal, it gives out a radial canal. Okay. This extent from this, uh, the ring canal, Till the tip of the corresponding arm. Okay. Now, uh, between two radial canals, you can see on the ring canal, between each of the, uh, like origin of the radial canal, you can see a pair of tight man's bodies. Okay, tight man's bodies over here. So, these are small rounded glandular sacs which open into the ring canal on its inner side, from its inner side. Okay. And there is one pair of tight man's bodies uh, between two uh, uh, radial canals between the origin of two radial canals okay adjacent radial canals if, if you can see the uh, origin of adjacent radial canals these a pair of tight man's bodies are placed on the inner side of the ring canal okay and uh, uh, these uh, like uh, almost there are nine uh, what you call uh, tight man's bodies so what happens to the tenth one actually it is in this position the, sto uh, the stone canal opens into the ring canal so, except for this position, every interradial region do have a pair of tight man's bodies. Okay, now what is its function, the tight man's body? It is believed to be a filtering device, uh, uh, like a, it uh, produces uh, phagocytic uh, amoebocytes that are released into the water, uh, the water vascular system, into the canal system. Okay, so that is the function of tight man's body. So, what are the functions? They are considered to be filtering uh, devices. They are considered to be the manufacturing or uh, what you call uh, devices uh, in the structures which uh, produce phagocytic amoebocytes. They are also considered to be uh, enzyme forming bodies by certain scientists. Okay, now coming to the next one, polyan vesicles. Even though it is not present in the asterias, we can see what are the structures in, uh, what is the structure. These uh, structures over here, you can see they are the polyan vesicles. Okay. So, polyan vesicles, they are pear-shaped, uh, thin-walled contractile bladders situated along the interradii and it opens into the ring canal. Okay. 
uh, on the outer side. Unlike the tight bands from the inner side, the polyam vesicles, it opens into the ring canal from the outer side. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, what is the function now? It regulates the uh, uh, pressure in the water vascular system. Okay. The hydraulic pressure uh, inside the water vascular system, it is uh, actually uh, maintained with the help of the polyam vesicle. Okay. As already mentioned, it is absent in the asterias. Passing on to the next canal, it is a radial canal. As already mentioned, the ring canal at each, along each radius, the ring canal, it gives out a radial canal. Okay. You can see here. Okay. Uh, it gives out a radial canal and it extends to the tip of each of the arm. Now, the radial canal, it lies just below the ambulacral ossicles. Okay. Uh, just below this uh, rid. And it terminates as the lumen of the terminal tentacle. I hope you re remember every arm, each of the arm do have a terminal tentacle at the end, at the tip. Okay. And the terminal tentacle, it is having a lumen inside, an open space inside. Actually, these, the radial canal uh, over here, it extends till the tip of the arm and reaching the tip of the arm, it just continues as a lumen of the terminal tentacle. Okay. Now, uh, each of the radial canal, if you see, it gives off uh, like lateral branches okay it gives off uh, a pair of lateral canals these are also known as podial canals okay and along its entire length from the uh, from its origin till the tip of the arm along its entire length the uh, radial canal gives off a set of two series of lateral canals on each side okay along the entire length now uh, in asterias the lateral canals of the two series they are alternately long and short in such a way that each short canal has a long canal on its outer and inner side. Okay. But a short canal on its opposite side. Simple thing. That is, you can see here itself, it is very clear, isn't it? Short can, this is shorter. Okay. This is longer. Okay. It is how it, it, this is how it will be arranged. Okay. So, two series are, the, I mean, uh, two series of the uh, lateral canals are there and it will be arranged in almost like this. Okay. And each lateral canal, it opens into the a tube foot okay this is a, a lateral canal it ends in a tube foot okay and the this opening into the tube foot it is being uh, controlled by a valve or it is regulated by a valve now when you speak about the uh, yeah the tube foot structure i'm sorry okay the, this is a tube foot over here and you can see the structure. So, there are, uh, in the case of uh, asterius driven, there are two double rows of tube feet in each arm. In each arm, you can see two rows of uh, tube feet on either side. Okay. Now, when you look into the structure of a tube foot, each tube foot has a, uh, what you call the form of a closed thin walled uh, uh, tube. Over here, you can see the structure. Uh, it extends through... Uh, a gap between, you can see here, it, it, it extends through a gap, uh, uh, what you call, called ambulacral uh, pole. Actually, between two adjacent ambulacral ossicles. So, these are the uh, ambulacral ossicles you can see. So, between adjacent uh, ambulacral ossicle, there is a, uh, an ambulacral pore is there through which the, the tube foot, it emerges out. Okay, you can see over here. I hope it is clear. Okay, now. Uh, each tube foot, if you can see, it can be distinguished into three regions. Okay, this part it is the ampulla. Okay, this part is the ampulla. Fine, and uh, this, the middle part, it is a tubular podium. We can say it is labeled very neatly over here. Okay, so this uh, tubular podium it ends in a cup like sucker. Over here, you can see this part is the sucker, this part is the Podium, the middle part, and this one is the ampulla. Okay, now uh, ampulla, it is a rounded sac like uh, structure you can see over here, situated above the ambulacral ossicles. So, this is the, these are the ambulacral ossicles, so it is placed above the ambulacral ossicles and it projects into the coelom. This is a coelom, so it is surrounded by a coelom. Okay, middle part of the uh, middle part, the podium part or the tubular podium part, it extends through the ambulacral groove. Okay, and we have the terminal sucker, which is a cup-like structure at the lower end of the podium. Okay, and uh, the whole wall uh, walls of the tube uh, tube feet it possesses uh, strong muscles. 
longitudinal muscles are there then um, the ampullate is uh, provided with uh, circular muscles while the podium it is provided with uh, rings of inelastic connective tissue okay the detail of locomotion will be looking in in the next